Our first question is going to be to Brian. Would you, let, would you generally describe what is typically involved in an investor's decision making process when selecting a project? I think, you know, in terms of uh, uh, decision process, you know, most of the Chinese investors, they are middle-aged people, okay, typically are couples. And uh, we also see, you know, y younger generations, for some kind of reason, that they want to stay in the United States. And, uh, you know, after college or after graduate school, they choose to stay here. So basically, the decision making involves the entire family, the husband, wife, and their children. Okay, uh, typically, the wife and the kids are make the key decision. I'm pretty sure Carol would share that process. If she say, "Dad, I don't want to go home," then <laughs> typically it will involve the entire family her parents. So when they make a decision, definitely it's a family decision, has a major impact on the entire family's life. So they are extremely cautious when they select the project. Uh, I remember when I was in China on the train mission, the YN uh, director of the UB5 program, she said to my train mission, she said, you know, some of the investor, they possibly spend half a year on every single weekend, they go to different seminars hosted by different agencies, different brokers. They just try to learn everything about the EB-5, trying to learn the difference between each project. Then they'll compare notes with their other friends. They do a lot of talking, a lot of homework, including the internet research. Okay, then they'll make the final decision. Sometimes investors because of all kinds of reasons, you know, they make bad choices. Okay, so I'm sure Kara has her unique way to make that final decision. So Brian, what you're saying is we really have more uh, from the American and the Chinese in common than the women are running boot things. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Well, I'm glad we got the ground rules understood, so thank you. Okay, then. Kyra, you're an EB-5 investor. Uh, would you please give us a little bit about your background, about yourself? Help us understand, uh, typically, uh, about the Chinese investors. Sure. That's why I'm here. I, I, actually, I think Brian already, he has already shared all the AB5 secret with you guys. So I'm here can only um, sharing some, some tough experience of mine. Um, I had five years working experience in China as a media worker. I was a television presenter, um, used to work in a very well-known television center. I quit my job in the year 2009, moved to the United Kingdom for the master degree with my husband. Um, when, when I got the degree, I had one year working um, as a fashion designer's assistant in, in London. Um, during that time, I came to travel in, in Los Angeles because I have two relatives in, in Los Angeles. And Christmas, think about it, Christmas in, in Los Angeles, California sunshine, delicious food, everything, you know, everything uh, surprised me. Then I went back to England, talked to my husband, can we move to the United States? He said, are you crazy? We are still in England. What, what makes you say that? Um, well, I said, you know, living in London, everything costs a lot, a lot. Think about it, one cucumber costs two pounds. Here, different. I said, well, we could think about our children's future. Well, actually, I am not. I haven't had had any children, child, yeah. But I used, made some excuse to him. Think about, for the better education, um, we should move. And you know, when our parents get retired, they can just come to visit us. It's, um, well, we could move to California. There are many beach houses, really fascinating ocean view, blah, blah, a lot of excuses. Yeah, eventually I, he agreed. He said, okay, this is money. 
half million dollars I am going to give you, but can we just uh, try to find a um, reliable project? At that time, to be honest, I had no idea what the reliable project was. My husband wanted to buy a project, buy, buy a company, buy a, something like a restaurant, well, which is called Direct EB5 nowadays. I know, I know the name, but at that time we didn't know. But my husband wanted to do that. Just wrong timing, we couldn't find it. Yeah. So basically what you're saying uh, as a proponent of Southern California, you had a choice of living in England, cold, rainy, winter, <laughs> yeah. to Southern dark, California. Dark. That's basically the way you started. Infant yes, you negotiated correct. negotiated death with your husband. Correct. And he had no choice but to move. Yes, because he loved him. <laughs> he loves him, yeah, for the love. Okay. <laughs> See, we have to understand the cultures. Okay. <laughs> so, uh, can you tell us a little bit more about how you selected a project, what you did as far as your due diligence, and those types of things? So, it now you've got really, it ready to go, now what do you do? Yeah, really hard. I had, I, I'm a lucky woman, I have to say that, but I had very, very bad experience looking for EB5 project. There was not super EB5 supermarket. There was nothing, and I didn't know Brian Sue. I didn't know anything. I just wanted to move to here. My relatives was so kind. They introduced me a uh, Chinese attorney. They well, they were so kind, but everything was so bad. <laughs> the the Chinese attorney who did not have any project like regional center or direct EB-5 project, but he, she, the, the attorney introduced me something so-called project, and I was so st stupid. I did not do any research, but just for moving here as soon as possible, because I can't, I can't wait. I wired five, half a million dollars to the, to the escrow bank in the morning, and in the afternoon, she called me. She said, um, this project hasn't been approved by the USCIS. So that was my first bad experience. Since that, I started looking for look, looking up the website, try to get the useful information about EB5, the project, what the regional center is, where the money goes, how they can create 10 jobs for me, when they can re return the money to me, how I can get the green card. So yeah, start looking. As Brian just said, it took me about six months six months to to look for the project. Now we're not picking on attorneys, but are you saying that we may have had a dishonest attorney that you were dealing with? <laughs> yes. <laughs> I'm I shocked. I'm yeah. absolutely yeah. shocked. <laughs> <laughs> okay, the next question is for John. John, you run an EB5 supermarket online in Chicago. And when you talk to Chinese investors and learn about EB5 and their services, what are you guys talking about internally? What are their concerns? Uh, actually, you know, I got a, you know, mostly encouraged just by email. So they send an email to us. And uh, typically, the most uh, question is uh, they give me a couple of uh, projects listing there, saying, uh, John, can you provide me more detailed information about those projects? So this means they are very cautious about uh, the information they're getting from China market. They want to verify and make sure those projects, they get the right information. So typically, I, of course, I redirect to the regional center, they handle the next step. The second, most of the question, sometimes the regional investors send the email and uh, just really just ask about, uh, do you have any recommendation? Of course, I cannot do it. But however, uh, we typically, we have a listing on the website. They can do the comparison. And the most of the people Sometimes we talk, I talk to them as well. They ask for, you know, for the say, you know, have an understanding of EB-5. I know they, a lot of people don't understand, really don't understand the EB-5. And also the agent uh, in China, it's uh, always some over-promising. So they get them, they be nervous about, and we know that as a, based on the security law, there's certain things you cannot just say, oh, I guarantee, Chinese agent always say, guarantee money back. So I don't know where they get that assume, assumption from. So, so, so people um, they want to find out, you know, why this guarantee come from. And so they, they ask, ask you know, because we are in the United States, they trust what we are, you know, we say and then what we understand about EB five. And also, third, 
a lot of uh, age, uh, investors send the email. Sometimes they like some certain project. So they just ask, you know, who is the agent handle this project? So I just redirect them to so the... Do you the also have like a blog out there that, uh, yep. that they're able to talk about their favorite projects, the good and the bad and the ugly? Uh, the, actually, you know, from, from our, pro our website, we are just the news, you know, we sort of like media. So we do a lot of a copy, another article as well. And I, we do know there's a lot of project on the fair in the industry, so we publish as well. So give it just give it education for the, the whole goal for us is education. So for another hand, you know, just like uh, you know, a lot of project, my customer their project in China, they do the you know a different uh, you know similar trade shows, and even Brian Su is my best customer as well. And uh, he, he has some events come up, we make announcement. So this which is uh, you know, we have a technology can link all the social media together, so they get a real time update all the information, which is very helpful to the industry. All right, the next question is to Brian. Uh, is real estate still attractive in China? And how are the host how are these hotels doing out there? The, uh, the real estate definitely is attractive. You know, traditionally, culturally, Chinese love real estate investment because over the past 30 years, Chinese investors made uh, tremendous wealth through the investing, uh, you know, in the real estate uh, business. Uh, the hotel projects are popular, you know, if you look at the broker's website, many of the EB-5 investment projects are hotel projects associated with big names like Marriott, Hilton, Holiday Inn, you know, Hampton Inn, uh, so it's well received in the marketplace. Well, the next one's for our young investor. Um, can you go into a little bit more about some of the trials and tribulations you said you did you seek any professional advice, you know, immigration attorneys? What was your selection process? And uh, can you tell us, if you are investing into a project, the name? Oh, well, I, I don't want to mention the name of my okay. project. Yeah, but the project is based in D.C. Uh, DC. Um, it's a real estate project. I went there to see, to tour twice, um, talked to an immigration attorney, um, talked to the owner of regional center. I saw everything. Um, yeah, when I felt comfortable, I put the money to ask for back. Okay. Next question is for Brian. We've seen many regional project centers in the market. However, some projects may not be suitable for regional center programs due to various reasons. Can you tell us more about standalone or EB-5 direct investments? Yeah, as I said in my presentations, you know, because of uh, the recent negative reports and the coverage, that Chinese investors are really coming back to the direct EB-5 project. Typically, as I said, those are the projects in service industry, such as you know primary care, assisted living, you know restaurant business, uh, clubs, because you know those uh, uh, sector provide you know three shift or whatever you know, more shifts a day, so they can hire a lot of full-time employees. And the uh, investor feel, well, if I'm able to be a equity partner, equity investor in a direct EB-5 project, it's very possible for me to have some kind of active role uh, in the process rather than to be a passive investor in EB-5 regional center uh, projects. Because when they invest in a EB-5 regional center project, they are passive. They really have no control. They have you know, no role in that uh, process. Yeah, so many of the investors are now uh, looking to the direct uh, projects. I think it would be fair to say, you know, early into the EB-5 program, it really was the direct investment the program was studied from Canada. It was good and the bad of that. The, the good was is that there was a lot of people signed up. The bad was is that many people, let's say they were going to buy a failed 7-Eleven store, they didn't know how to run the failed 7-Eleven store, and it wasn't successful. But what we're seeing now with some of these uh, new EB-5 potential investors, they're experienced at home. They're entrepreneurs. And I think that we're going to see a lot more direct investment uh, from maybe uh, some of those investors that uh, are moderate of uh, means, uh, but uh, look for a good family investment, and I think that uh, it could be a great opportunity. 
Next question is to, uh, for John. Let's say almost like the, the, the same thing. We're dealing with maybe a, a small direct or a small project, very limited resources. How can your social media program help uh, these particular uh, investors? Uh, social media, actually, you know, you can, you can, I don't know if you know Facebook. I mean, in China, actually, uh, the social media have been more and more powerful. Really is powerful, and, and a lot of users use the social media as a communication way to do it. And I just talked to uh, you know the you know the Ray Johnson, the president, and uh, the the Chinese you know investor, they before they make a decision, they are going to do a lot of homework, which is mean they're going to talk to agent, talk to project uh, the uh, the project manager, and also they're going to do a lot of own research as well, which is they use the internet. And also the, yeah, the the funny things I have been you know talking about one of the investor they they just use a, you know social media like like I did in China is called Renren or QQ they just chat each other online and they find out they have five another investor looking into one particular project so they they became friends and they social they network together and they say you know. How about we just invest together, inv do the investigation together to everybody find out any information regarding this project that we share each other. So eventually they make a group. They say they are going to make a decision together. It's kind of, you, you, don't, you cannot imagine the, the, uh, the social media and the, the internet have been really, really connected all those investors together. So which is mean uh, when you go to China, you promote this, you have to be uh, Knowing what happened now in the market, and you need to do the same, you know, reactions means you need to prepare the marketing, everything ready. And also, uh, in it just like I, I talk, and the, the, for some reason the project in China market they they sometimes they attack each other. It's the competitors, so they use the social media, they use a blog, there's a particular you know you know the form, so constantly release some incorrect information. So. You need to, you have to watch. You need to have to correct them. You need to react with this investor. So this is very became very very important in the market. So that's my vision, and and, and uh, you know it's not just that when you go to China, it's just like oh I leave uh, you know the agent to do it because agent they have their own job to promote the project, but you have to watch as well for make sure that every the, the piece of information is correct across the internet and, and people search constantly, yeah. Okay, the next question is for Brian. I want to give a little bit of metaphor about Brian. I've had the privilege of being second generation pilot. One of my favorite pilots was Charles Lindbergh. And the examples I'm going to give you is here's a man who's about 26 years of age. He flies from New Jersey all the way to Paris, nonstop. It had never been done before. Now, if you've talked to anybody, and I had a, a privilege of a very young man of meeting Lindbergh, Probably if he had it to do again, he wouldn't do it because it was extremely lonely out there. And uh, I think that when we have people like Brian and other professionals that are Tom, this is what the question that we posed. As an example, our project is readily for investors. How can I approach an immigration agents in China or in Korea? And what are their fees typically involved? In other words, what's the lay of the land? Um, you're talking about a pilot at a younger age traveling. You know, when I came to this country at the age of 24 and defected from the Chinese government, I really did not know anybody in this country. You know, actually, I was on the wanted list by the Chinese government. You know, <laughs> that's a tremendous risk I took. But if you ask me if I would ever do it again, I would. Okay. Uh, when you are taking the risk, such as the EB-5 investment, if you choose the right project, if you choose, if you make the right decision, the reward is tremendous. Okay, so for the developers, also you receive your reward, which is you will see your project to be built with sufficient capital, you know, you get from the marketplace. So how to get that contact? the right contact. As I said, there are over 600 immigration companies in China and over 50 immigration companies in South Korea. 
But how do you know which one is the right one for you? How do you know which one would be truly a working partner with your project? So that's a tremendous risk you are going to take. And that requires a lot due diligence. That requires a lot professional guidance. I'm not trying to sell myself, but that's my honest words. So you have to be very, very careful and be willing to spend the time, willing to be you know, working with other professionals to do the due diligence. Okay, by reaching out on your own, it's very difficult. Just like myself, I did not know anybody when I came to this country. It's a tremendous hardship. Okay, my Chinese friend asked me, said, Brian, did you receive money from KMT, the nationalist government in Taiwan? I said, of course I didn't. I said, you know, when I talked to Jeff, I think I mentioned one time, I said uh, doing the skilled nursing or senior care, that was my first job in the United States, okay, as a food server in a nursing home. Okay, I have to get up at 4 a.m. every single day, driving my $300 Dodge, you know, <laughs> hatchback, and making tremendous noises when I drove, okay. <laughs> but, you know, I did not know anybody. If I knew someone who lent a hand to me, that would make my life easier. Okay, when we are talking about, you know, seeking capital overseas in a strange country, you definitely need that help and uh, need that professional guidance to make the right connection. All right, the next question is to Brian and John. <clears throat> there are so many projects in the market. How can a new kid on the block compete with established regional centers? Uh, again, you know, most of the regional centers, they are relatively new, okay? They were approved the last couple of years, okay? It doesn't mean, you know, you are not able to uh, secure the capital, okay? If you put your commitment, your efforts, and again, you know, know what you're doing, even you are new, you know, new kid on the block, you know, you will be uh, successful. You know, most of my clients uh, I help with, they're completely new. I do not have clients uh, with uh, old timers like American Life, uh, like Ken Am. You know, they are, they were, you know, we talked, but they, they were never my clients. So most of my clients, we would successfully raise capital in China. They are new. Just give you a couple examples: Cleveland International Fund. You know, which was looking for a couple of years ago, looking for like 80 investors for a single office tower project, and they approached me. They said, uh, "How can I trust you, Brian? You know, we got a, a proposal from another agency uh, based in San Francisco. Uh, why you think you can help us?" So I told him, "I said, definitely I can help you. Okay, because the agency." who proposed to you is a travel agency. Did you realize that? Okay, it's a travel agency based in San Francisco, and the saw the opportunity in EB-5. Suddenly, they are offering EB-5 consulting services. So definitely, they were convinced, and they hired me. We, we helped him to secure the exclusive marketing contract and sold that project in four months. Another project, you know, developer based in Las Vegas, developing the FBI regional headquarter office in San Diego, same thing. They are the new kid on the block. They don't know anything except coming to my seminar a couple times. You know, then I introduced the, the developer to another client of mine, which is also a new regional center. So they work together, we work as a team. And I brought in the immigration agency, signed the exclusive contract. That project was sold 80 investors in one single month. So those are the successful stories. You are a new kid, okay, that's fine. If you are willing to learn, and if you are willing to listen, and to work together with others, and work in the right direction, in the right way, you are able to succeed in the market. 
So, uh, Brian, what you're saying is if we're willing to learn, uh, it's probably a good life experience. Um, we were talking about flying just a little bit. Is uh, I had the privilege young, uh, as a young man of flying professionally. One of my first assignments was uh, uh, flying a, an AG uh, single-engine aircraft. And uh, I decided one day to quit. So what I decided to do was learn about two engines. Jets. <laughs> it's not fun going down when you have no control. And uh, I just strongly, strongly encourage uh, people who are thinking about getting in, into this business is to get to those professionals that have been over there, that have done that, and, and know the, the lay of the land, because it's different. It's a, it's a whole a different uh, set of modality. Well, this is a question for our young uh, investor again. I'm going to rephrase the question, but what would you suggest uh, if uh, we were talking to uh, EB-5 regional centers or even uh, our company? How could we do a better job? Me. Oh. <laughs> yes. Um, suggestion. Well, it, I think it's a win-win game. I, I think it is. You borrow the money from investors from overseas countries with low or no interest, um, we get the green card. It's like win-win. And I also describe it as a, as a marriage. You know, when the I-526 approved, it's like engagement. I-829, it's like you know, marriage certification. <laughs> five years. Like, Bye. Happy can, can ending. Sure that <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so um, be honest to investors. Now, since the, you know, the social media is getting popular, we are not that stupid. We know everything, and we talked. We, yeah, just be honest to the investors. For example, show your grand date to investors. Tell them the truth. Um, I don't think most of investors from overseas countries, well, from China, they would go see the project in person, but most of brokers would, would do this instead, just to show them honestly what you have, what would you like to create. Once you get a successful case, that would be great in the future. I believe that. Okay, the next question is for Brian. At what point uh, during the EB-5 process should a regional center begin to put efforts into their marketing material? Is there is early always better? Uh, you know, of, of course, you know, you can, uh, you know, get started in uh, designing the marketing brochures, the website, you know, get a lot of things ready. Uh, you can definitely, you know, test water by, you know, uh, going out to, uh, you know, to the trade shows or even talk to the brokers you know, talk to the agents or talk to the immigration uh, attorneys that you know get some feedbacks about, you know, uh, what kind of interest or is, if there are any interest in your proposed project, okay? Uh, if the interest is low, why is that? You know, uh, why is that? Figure out that reason, okay? So it's never early to pre, you know, to pre-marketing your project. But however, you have to be extremely cautious Okay, mm -hmm. when you introduce your project to officially to the marketplace, that would be very different. Okay, you do not want. Uh, let me put it this way, you do not want to deliver that baby if the baby is not mature. Okay, there's a due time, but however, you need to constantly go to see the doctor to make sure that baby is growing. Right, okay, but when the time is coming, the baby will be out. Okay, that's what I can explain in terms of the EP5 marketing. Make sure you shape the project in every way, okay, as perfect as possible. Okay, of course, there's no perfect, you know, uh, perfection, but however, you want to do as good as possible, then formally introduce the project to the immigration industry, to the uh, investors, rather than introduce the project at a premature stage. 
Okay, this is the final question to the panel. Can you give us your wisdom, uh, your suggestions, and thoughts for people who are looking to get involved in raising EB-5 capital, or wanting to become regional centers? <laughs> okay. Uh, definitely, it's a, it's a process of teamwork. And it involves commitment financially as well. Okay, uh, because I get a question from the potential, you know, uh, developers uh, for the EB-5 project. They say, Brian, can you help me find an investor so that I have enough money to pay all the legal fees? Okay, or hire the business plan writer to write my business plan. So if you are in that type of condition, you are not, not the right person to engage in EB-5 program. Okay. Uh, it takes resources financially uh, as well. So you must have money in place. You must have the right project. Not every single project fits the EB-5 program. Just give you an example. High-tech startup. If you have a high-tech startup project, venture capital might be the good one for you to, to consider. Even it's difficult to get venture capital at this point. Okay, but uh, I would just suggest you not waste your time and the resources on the EB-5 path. Because uh, investors, they want to deal with a business with good track record. If you are a very new startup, definitely it's not right. Uh, it's not a right candidate for the EB-5 program. Uh, the real estate is good. The manufacturing is good, the service industry is good, okay? But in order to make those projects marketable and saleable, you really have to make sure you are uh, structuring the offering in the right way, in a competitive way, so that you can stand out in the very crowded market. Yeah. Um, this is a, you know, I have a, I'm in that city for, for many years and I, I, can, I do see um, the market, you know, you know, you need a high, you know, you really need a high professional, the, uh, the consultant to, uh, to give you a consultation for it. Just like the example, you know, the EB-5 market in China, how it looks like, how they run. You need, you have to understand it before, you know, the, you, you pack and prepare the project. And the, the best way really get those experienced consultants in understanding what marketing needs. So you can you can prepare the your know, marketing material, everything is ready for that market. Is that I, I, I do see a lot of uh, regional center sometimes they they even come to us and they say, oh our product is the best in the world but but he don't understand what's the China market they looking at their product. So the best way is really need to, you know, well prepare and uh, when you present, it has to be, I, we don't say perfect, but however, it has to be well prepared to present to, uh, to the China market right away, yeah. All right, we're going to open it up uh, to anyone who has any questions uh, to the panel. Anyone? Do you have your, this is for the young investor, do you have your 829 approval? No, I'm still waiting. Well, how long do you think it's going to be until you get it? I'm still waiting for I-526. Oh, for yeah. I-526. It's shame oh, for, she's you She's in know. what we call in the queue. Oh, okay. <laughs> still waiting for the baby. <laughs> <laughs> now, Engaging. the due date Engaging. should be, I don't know, January. Let me spend just a, a couple more minutes about what we call yeah, in the queue. Right. In February, uh, the United States government decided to, to do a great thing for uh, the EB-5 regional centers. And they started talking about a development word, tenant occupancy. Of course, I could probably interview 100 attorneys and have 99 different opinions because no one is really telling us what that means. But as a developer, I finally concluded what it means is that I believe that there were a number of office projects that got approved. Some of the federal adjudicators go by those buildings. They look through them, and there's no tenants. So there's kind of a real question going out there. Um, uh, will tenants result in jobs? And uh, even as uh, early as uh, this week uh, with a conference call, we had uh, a two-hour call with the director. We had five minutes on the tenant occupancy issue. 
And the answer that came, if I heard it correctly, is film at 11 coming soon. <laughs> so we consistently don't know that. Um, so um, uh, what's happening as a result of that is, you know, uh, what some of the uh, older regional centers have told me uh, as kind of a, a, a newer regional center is that they were getting, you know, 526s uh, through the process a few years ago in 90 days. We hear people now waiting a year. And I think it becomes duty as an industry to start educating uh, also those investors of saying, look, we don't control the federal government. I wish we did, but we don't. And to be a little bit more open and direct that hopefully that program is going to change. We don't think that that's going to be forever, but it is taking time. And part of it, I think, has also to do with the amount of applications that have come on a policy basis for the program.